Hello everybody and welcome back to another super week of Zoom. During the Zoom series, we are zooming in and out of the first five books of the Bible, the book of Moses. Today, we'll be zooming in and out, out of the fourth book of the Bible. Do you know, kids, what book that is? Do you know, Michelle? Numbers. Yes, it's the book of Numbers. This book teaches God takes sin seriously. So we should live our life his way. Mm -hmm. And before we get started though, I want to do a practice Zoom with you. So I will show you a picture. And when you think you know what it is, shout it out. And be sure to mark it in your challenge card. It's a speed sign. It's one of the many rules that we have to follow on the road. Why do you think we have that rule? And what are some of the consequences for not, not following that, Fernanda? You know, I, I believe like if the speed limit is 60, for example, that is the speed that is safe in that area, right? Yeah. So if you are going faster, then you could be in trouble if you need to stop suddenly. And especially in our crazy Winnipeg winter. Don't do Absolutely. that, guys. If an officer finds you speeding, he can give you a ticket. That can be very expensive. Like bags and bags of toys expensive. Wow, that's a great answer, Fernanda. Let me ask you to explain a few other rules we might have to follow. Okay. In our family, we have a rule that you can't complain during a family outing. Okay. Why, why do you think we have that rule? Um, so you can't complain? No. Okay, let me think. Okay, let me put myself in your situation, okay? Good in idea. that situation. Yeah. I'm hungry and we are out on a family walk, okay? And I mentioned I'm hungry to my parents and my parents say we just had lunch and we have nothing with us. So I start to pout grumble and continue to say how hungry I am the whole mm -hmm. walk. Mm -hmm. My sister gets super anno annoyed with me and we fight. And that walk is not fun at all. Mm -mm. So I wrecked our family time and I'm still hungry. And my sister is angry at me. So what did complaining solve? Nothing. That is a great example. There's a reason for every rule and a consequence for not following it. That's true for us today too. And it was true for the Israelites in the Bible. In the book of Numbers, we get to see what happens when people stop following God's rules. Are you ready to zoom in? Yes. I love zoom. Great. Here's what we're going to do. Just like before, I'm going to show you a picture of something really close up. And then every few seconds, we're going to zoom out a little bit, a little bit, and a little bit. And when you think you know what the answer is, shout it out and be sure to mark your challenge card. Yes, good. Here's your Zoom. Yay. Did you get it? It's bread. When the Israelites left Egypt, God took care of his people. As they traveled across the desert toward the promised land, God made bread called manna appear on the ground every morning. Whoa. Yeah, but after a while, the people got tired of even manna and started complaining. They wished they could be slaves in Egypt again so they could eat whatever they wanted. Okay, hmm. Ms. Michelle, mm -hmm. on the count of three, okay. show me what you would sound like if you were an Israelite. Okay. okay? And then okay. when I, when I raise, raise my hand, just stop. Okay. okay, so you want me to complain? Yes. Okay. One, okay. two, three. Oh man, it is manna again. Ugh, manna! I can't 
need any more mana. Okay. <laughs> you sound like you have had practice doing that, Michelle. I'm, I'm acting out my kid. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look at what happened next. So here's your next Zoom clue. <laughs> It's a fire extinguisher. When God heard the Israelites complaining, he became upset and he sent a raging fire through the edge of their camp. Everyone ran around as their tents went up in flames, but not Moses. Instead, Moses dropped to his knees and he prayed that God would forgive them for complaining. Now, when God heard Moses' prayer, he forgave the Israelites and he stopped the fire immediately. Are you ready for your next Zoom clue? Here it is. It's a grasshopper. When the Israelites finally reached the promised land, God told them to move, to move in and make it their home. Hmm. There was just one problem though. There were already people living there, huh. like big, big, big people. Some of the Israelites cried out. We're like tiny grasshoppers compared to them. <laughs> they will attack and kill us. Okay, not everyone was so scared though. Two of their leaders, Joshua and Caleb, spoke up and said, Don't be afraid. God will be with us. But the people refused to listen to their leaders. And they refused to enter the promised land. How do you think God felt about this? Let's find out. Find out. Here is your next Zoom clue. That's right, it's a U-turn sign. When the Israelites refused to enter the promised land, God was not happy. In fact, he was so upset that he wanted to destroy the Israelites. But again, Moses dropped to his knees and he begged for him to show forgiveness. And when God heard Moses' prayer, he forgave the Israelites. But because of their lack of faith, the Israelites had to do a U-turn and go back into the desert for 40 more years, Fernanda. Oh no. God told Moses that none of the grown-ups would ever see the promised land. And only when they had all died and their kids had grown up, would they be able to enter the promised land. Oh, that's terrible. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dofer. Hey, Mrs. Fernanda. In the book of Numbers, the Israelites discovered that every sin has a consequence. What were some of the ways that the Israelites sinned, Topher? They complained and disobeyed God. That's right. They complained about the manna and they refused to listen to their leaders and obey God. And even though God forgave them as a consequence, the Israelites still had to wander around the desert for another 40 years. It's kind of like that for us too. Yes, absolutely. You are absolutely right. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to make a list. We're going to think of some of the sins we might commit and the consequences that come with them. So let's start with lying. What are some consequences of lying? People will no longer trust you. Okay, no trust. Um, and how about gossiping? Hmm. What do you think? You can hurt people or lose friends. And what could be a consequence for stealing? 
You can go to jail. Yes, just like Moses did, we can confess our sins to God. We can tell God about the wrong things we have done and ask him for forgiveness. And when we do that, God forgives our sins. It's as if the sin disappear. So if I write down on this hand here, my sin of lying, and I also, what happens when I lie? So lose trust. So I have here lying and the consequences. If I try to wash everything here, you can see the sin is gone. But that's, does that mean that the consequences go away? Mm, let's see. It doesn't seem that this is washing off. Can you see that, Topher? The consequences of sin didn't disappear for the Israelites. And they didn't disappear for us either. Even though God forgives us, our sins can hurt us. And they can hurt other people, too. That's why God takes sin so seriously. Sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Yeah, sin is pretty bad. But I've got some good news. Even though most consequences do don't just disappear, there is one consequence that does. Our Bible verse for today can help us figure out what it is. So kids, open with us your Bible to Romans chapter 6. Verse 23rd. Can I read Mr. Fernando, please, please, please? Yeah, absolutely, Topher. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord, in our Lord. Romans 6, verse 23. You know, Topher, the worst consequence for our sin is death. I don't mean the kind of death where you fall to the ground and stop breathing. When this Bible verse talks about that, it means that sin separates us from God forever and ever. But when Jesus died on a cross, not only did he make our sins disappear, he made death disappear too. We no longer have to be separated from God. When we love and follow Jesus, we get eternal life. That means we get to live with God forever in heaven. So, Topher, let's pray and, and thank God for this incredible gift, okay? So, kids, close your eyes and let's pray. Dear God, it's such a privilege that you came to earth and that you can forgive our sins and that you sacrifice yourself so we can no longer be separated from you and that we can have eternal life and that we can have um, we can be your friends forever and that's so amazing that's such a, a incredible love you have for us and we uh, it's such a privilege to be your friends and your daughters and your sons in Jesus name we prayed amen okay kids see you next week <laughs>